Well, as the nation faces yet another foreclosure crisis, Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats are facing eviction as Election Day nears. The latest polls have the Republicans retaking the majority in the House handily. Time to let the Willis watchdogs out. Aaron Task is the host of Yahoo Tech Ticker. Andy Levy is the ombudsman with Red Eye on the Fox News Channel. That just makes me laugh. <laughs> and Leslie Marshall is a radio talk show host in Los Angeles and Fox News contributor. Leslie, let's start with you. Ms. Pelosi, does she have a future? We'll have to see what the voters say, and it depends what poll you read and what time it is in the day. They're changing hourly now, and they will in the weeks to come. Uh, but obviously in her own district, yes. But as House Speaker, I am a liberal Democrat, but uh, there are some seats that are very, very close races. So too early to tell. Andy? I'm not sure which polls are changing that much daily or hour by hour. It's going to be a Republican majority. But what I love about this... You heard it here first. Oh, no, I mean, well... A second or third. I think you yeah. heard it here yeah. for the 800th yeah. time, yeah. But I, I love the story. Democrats are trying to get uh, a foreclosure freeze right before election time. Many of the people in the areas where the foreclosure freeze would happen happen to be in states where Democrat incumbents are in trouble. Back in my day, we called this bribery. <laughs> and my day was last Thursday. I, I just, I don't know how they get away with this stuff is beyond me. Aaron, are they getting away with stuff here? Well, yes, but I don't think the foreclosure moratorium is bad politics at all, because if there's anybody who's less popular than Congress right now, I would hope it's the banks. I mean, what they're trying to do, foreclosing on properties where they don't have the title and they don't have the Absolutely. lien is, is criminal. I mean, you know, these, they're going to people's Good homes, politics, throwing ridiculous their stuff. Ridiculous yeah. economic policy. Ridiculous economics, no doubt about it. I mean, a foreclosure moratorium would not be a good thing because at some point all those foreclosed homes are going to come back on the market and that's going to depress home prices even further. For the people who are paying their mortgages, hello. Yes. Sorry. By yes. the way, I'm not saying it's not good politics. Bribery is always good politics. <laughs> right. right. And it's fueled many a country. Yeah. I just don't want to be in one of them. All right, the Wall Street Journal reporting several popular Facebook apps have been transmitting users' personal info to dozens of advertising and internet tracking companies. Facebook says it's working to fix the problem and points out leaks are not intentional, but a consequence of the web. Aaron, is there no such thing as privacy? There is no such thing as online privacy, for sure. Anything you post on the web, you have to assume that somebody, if they want it badly enough, can find it. The problem with Facebook is that this is not the first time they've had issues with privacy, and every time they say, oops, we're sorry, we're gonna fix it. At some point you have to wonder, is this what they're all about? <laughs> You've taken your personal data and we're going to sell it to advertisers or other third parties, whoever they may be. Leslie, what do you make of this story? Well, I think, is this what they're all about? Come on, we live in a capitalistic society where greed is our god. Of course, making money is what it's all about. My mother once said, never write anything down you don't want the entire world to read. And so I agree with Aaron when it comes to privacy. Online, we don't have any. So we have to know that when we put it out there, it's out there. Yeah, but it's not about greed. It, it, it's about, you know, if Facebook says one thing, oh, your information is safe, and then other parties within Facebook take your information and get it out there, that's a problem. That's got nothing to do with capitalism or anything. You know, yeah, you'll never get hit by a car if you stay in your house. But, and that's absolute privacy. Not necessarily. That's well, true, yes. Not necessarily okay. if a car comes through your house. But you can also, you know, you can leave the house and take necessary precautions to not get hit by a car, and that's protecting your privacy, knowing you're giving up some of it. Okay, I'm lost here. We've got cars, right. we've got personal <laughs> but, privacy. But, I'm not really sure where the, this is The point going. is you can protect a lot of your privacy online if you take the necessary steps. The problem is most people don't take those steps because they're either ignorant or lazy. Right, but, but, if you, but to your point, if you take those steps and then your information is still sold to third parties or just leaked out, you have a right to be frustrated. Right. Exactly. I mean, absolutely. Stop right. putting stupid stuff on the web. That's what well, I would yes, say for the absolutely. love of right. God. You but know? Amen. But this Amen isn't about stupid that. stuff. This is about <laughs> you think you're giving information in privacy because the policy says you are, and then suddenly you're not. That's a problem. And they've been in this situation before, so right. now we know how we should think about their policies. Exactly. I Read think. the fine print very yeah. carefully. All right. I, I quit Facebook a couple of months ago. Impressive. That's a trend. That is a growing trend, actually. All right. Let's go on to the next story. The New York Post is reporting New York City has set up an online suggestion box for residents. How thoughtful. To suggest how the Big Apple can save money. And the suggestions were pretty darn good. One, charging Red Sox fans a toll to enter the Bronx. <laughs> Our staff loved the idea. I thought it sucked. <laughs> Rent out real-life city rats to unions for their rallies require bicyclists to get a license, and finally, recycle Elliot Spitzer's hot air from his new television show to heat low-income housing. Andy, my friend. I think this is a great idea. Here's my plan. Stop spending money. Oh, 
Wow. Yeah. That's so thoughtful. I know, but <laughs> I, I know it's it's a radical notion, and I, yeah, I don't know if anyone else has come up with it. But if you're running out of money, if you can't afford things, stop buying. Huh. What do you make of that, Aaron? Well, that is a radical suggestion. I mean, my, my suggestion is that Mayor, Mayor Bloomberg just writes a check. <laughs> I mean, he could, cover, he could cover the deficit a couple times over. Hey, Leslie, you're a Democrat. Stop spending money. Does it work for you? Sometimes stop spending money is a good idea. How about a better idea? Ed have voters be educated and elect politicians that don't need to put ads in papers to find out how to do their jobs. And as a Bostonian, you want our Red Sox yeah, money baby. spending uh -oh. at the Chachi yeah. Souvenir Shops in Times Square. I'm on your page. All right. Thanks, Aaron, Andy, and Leslie. Appreciate your time. The warnings are becoming realities. I've been telling you for months, Obamacare is going to cost you more. Next, I'll give you my two cents on one major company telling its employees to blame Obama for their rising rates.